Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to the fourth episode of Brej Bagan. In our today's lesson, we'll be talking about how to analyze a linear function. That is how to figure out what's the gradient of the graph and what's the y-intercept of the graph. There's a skill over here that's not just important from the perspective of your MCQL theory paper. It's important on all the five papers of your A-level physics, specifically your, M your practical and your paper five. So let's dive in. We all know that a linear function is generally represented as y equals mx plus c, where this y is the quantity on the y-axis, x is the quantity on the x-axis, the m represents the gradient, and c represents the y-intercept. Right now, we have an equation that says t equals 2 pi under root L over g. So the question goes like, if I'm plotting t on the y-axis against root L on the x-axis, I've drawn a graph with an example over here to make things a bit more clear. So if I have t on the y-axis against under root L on the x-axis, what would the gradient and the y-intercept of this graph tell me? So for that, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rearrange my equation in such a way that I have t and under root l isolated from all the other variables. With t, that is something that I'm going to plot on the y-axis on one side of the equation and the rest of the stuff on the other side. So right now, t is already independent on the left-hand side of my equation. I'm just going to do with gravity. No, separating it. There. Right now, I have t on the left hand side of my equation and I have under root l separated out. The reason I've done that is so that I can compare it with y equals mx plus c. When I'm comparing it, I can see that if I'm plotting t on the y axis against under root l on the x axis, the gradient of the graph is equal to 2 pi upon root g. And there is no y-intercept because you have nothing written afterwards. So the y-intercept over here is zero. So we figured out that the gradient is 2 pi upon root g. And the y-intercept is actually zero. We can do a similar exercise for the next equation that we have. The equation is same, but this time I'm plotting t square on the y-axis against l on the x-axis. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure that t square is and t square and l are both isolated from all the other variables. So for that, I have to first take square on both sides. When I'm going to take square on both sides, it's going to be t square equals 4 pi square l over g. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write it like this, t square equals 4 pi square upon g into l. And then we are going to compare y equals mx plus c. So if t squared is on the y-axis against l on the x-axis, the gradient this time is equals to 4 pi squared upon g. And the y-intercept is again 0. Because there is no expression written afterwards. So we can say that the gradient is equals to 4 pi squared over g and the y-intercept is equal to 0. So that's how it works. Let's try the same skill on some other equations. We have an equation s equals half g t squared. And if you're plotting s on the y-axis against t squared on the x-axis, this equation is already segregated. You can simply compare it with y equals mx plus c. And you can see yourself that half g is equal to the gradient. But again, y intercept is 0. See? Separate the variable on the y and the x axis and uh, compare the equation with y equals mx plus c. That how, that's how it goes. Let's try v equals u plus at. We have b on the y axis against t on the x axis. All right. 
So I'm going to rearrange my equation like this. Now I'm going to compare y equals mx plus c. So you can see that the acceleration is actually the gradient and u is the y intercept. You can say that the gradient is equal to a and the y intercept is equal to u. Let's try on with another equation. r equals rho l upon a plus k with r on the y axis against l on the x axis. You can see r equals rho upon a times l plus k. Comparing it with y equals mx plus c. And we see that the gradient is equal to rho over a and the y intercept is equal to k. We simply compare. When L upon T equals lambda F plus D, they say if you're going to plot 1 upon T on the Y axis against lambda, what we see right now over here, it's L over T. We have to plot just 1 over T on the Y axis. I have to get rid of this L. So it's being multiplied by 1 over here. So when I'm going to take it on the other side of the equation, it's going to get divided. Let's do that. So it will be 1 over T. L is going to go on the other side of the equation and hence it's going to be on the in the denominator. Now you can separate the denominator out. It's going to be like lambda f over L plus d over L. A slight more simplification. I'm going to write f over L times lambda just trying to separate out the variable that I have to plot on the x-axis so that I know the rest of the variables are going to be the gradient of my graph plus d over l. Now I'm going to compare it with y equals mx plus c. So you can see over here that 1 upon t on the y-axis, lambda on the x-axis, so gradient is equals to f over l, and y intercept is equals to d over l. I can say the gradient is equals to f over l, y intercept is equals to d over l. That's how it works. Another equation v equals e minus ir with v on the y axis, i on the x axis. Let's rearrange it a bit. slight amount of more rearrangement making sure that i is segregated out on the extreme right now i'm gonna compare with y equals mx plus c so now when i'm going to compare i'll say that the gradient is equals to minus r and the y intercept is equals to e so i can write down on over here that the gradient is equals to minus r y intercept is equals to e. Then 1 upon r equals 1 upon s plus 1 upon t. If I'm going to plot 1 upon r on the y-axis and 1 upon s on the x-axis, let's see what happens. Draw a line over here. Okay. So we have 1 over r equals 1 over s plus 1 over t. And when we compare it with y equals mx plus c, then there is nothing written over here with 1 over s. There's nothing. This means it's 1. So the gradient is equal to 1. And the y-intercept is equal to 1 over t. So I can say gradient is equals to 1 and the y-intercept is equals to 1 over t. Similarly, qv equals hf minus phi. We have to plot v on the y-axis, f on the x-axis. So I have to separate the v out. I'm going to divide the right-hand side of my equation by q. 
which is hf minus phi over q. Now I'm going to separate the denominator this and slight more amount of simplification it's going to be h over q into f minus phi over q now i can compare y equals mx plus c when you compare you see h over q equal to the gradient of the graph and minus phi over q as the y-intercept so i can write it down over here that the gradient is equal to h over q and the y-intercept is equal to minus phi over q. Don't forget the negative sign. So compare it completely. Then d sine theta equals n lambda. So if I have sine theta on the y-axis against n on the x-axis, what I can do is get rid of the d from the left-hand side. It's going to be n lambda over d. Slight amount of sub like separation it's going to be lambda over d into n now it's easier to compare y equals mx plus c so you can observe over here that the gradient is equal to lambda over d and in this case there is no y intercept because there's nothing written afterwards so the gradient is equal to lambda over d and the y intercept is equal to Zero. So the basic idea of this entire exercise was to recall that whenever we have to compare an equation with y equals nx plus c, observe which quantity is on the y-axis and which quantity is on the x-axis. Either the exam is going to tell you or like in the form of a statement or in the form of a graph. He would show you which quantity he has plotted on the y-axis and which on the x-axis. Whatever you, Whenever you get a question like this, First step is to separate the quantities, that is, place the quantity on the y axis on the left hand side of the equation and the quantity on the x axis on the right hand side of the equation. Make sure that you separate that quantity like from all the other variables so that you can clearly compare and find out what's the gradient and what's the y intercept. I hope this lecture was useful and this skill is going to be really helpful to you guys throughout your entire levels. Take care. Love is.